بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم النبي وغير المرسلين so tomorrow is one year the one year anniversary for the seventh for the glorious seventh of October 2023 um, we have been following that but we can give a quick summary so in, on 7th of October 2023 Hamas staged a surprising attack uh, at uh, the so-called envelope of Gaza demolishing one division, taking even a general hostage or, or a prisoner of war more exacting as a prisoner of war and quite a number of soldiers. And this general still is there in their hand. And uh, uh, a number of uh, civil, so-called civilians who were in that area. Uh, let me just mention quickly that the so-called civilians there are actually trespassers in a land which doesn't belong to them. So they have to be removed by force. So we don't want to go to these legalities and so on. We have discussed that thousands of times. And uh, uh, to prevent uh, Hamas from having m many more prisoners of war, the IDF shot over a thousand uh, uh, Israelis who were in some kind of a dancing or, or a music festival there, <clears throat> disrespecting their own Sabbath and their own Yom Kippur, etc. Anyway, that's not our business. They can disrespect their, disrespect or respect their own festivities as much as they like. And... Um, uh, and uh, uh, they then came out with the famous story of uh, beheading of babies, putting babies in ovens, mass rape, and so on, which completely turned out to be and has been proven now absolutely. And they're repeating. When Netanyahu spoke a few days ago, he repeated the same nonsense. That's the way they do. They invent a lie, propagated their masters and allies and friends in the West, uh, spread it through the main media, which is under their control, Murdoch and, and co, but also the semi-government media like the BBC, which people are now coining as a British bullshit channel. It's not, not anymore British Broadcasting Corporation, unfortunately. 50, 70 years ago, it did have some reputation of some, some good reporting, but I think this is all have evaporated. With the decline of the empire, even the media of the empire has declined to a laughable level. Uh, that's... Uh, <clears throat> and... Uh, and the same apply for other lies. Like, for example, after the World War II, someone invented the story of six million Jews being gassed or something like that. Now, there have been maybe tens, maybe hundreds, thousands, two hundred thousand Jews possibly uh, uh, killed or, or dying in, in concentration camps. Nobody denies that. But the six million, the number of six million, and also the claim of gassing and things that, even the gassing turns out to be, the so-called gas, sh gas chambers turns out to be disinfectant uh, to... Uh, to protect people from lice and other diseases anyway. But this lie is sticking until now, and they keep repeating it. And by, according to the Goebbels uh, advi advice, lie, lie until everyone believes you, and continue lying until you believe yourself, believe your own lie. So it seems to me they, they, they went to that stage. And then what Goebbels did not mention, and if you continue after that, the lie will be exposed and it will become a mockery of sane human beings, which is now happening. So that was that. Uh, uh, everyone was shocked, obviously. Uh, reports, read the report, as Hassan Salah was, uh, was shocked and we did not know who started the attack and so on because Hamas did not inform Sinwar, North Rizazi, decided not to inform anybody from the alliance, so-called resistance front. Well, the reason for that is that uh, most likely because he knows, and this has been proven through time, that they, uh, that he cannot be safe from spies. So he could not communicate a zero uh, moment to anybody. But the action and so on was re really agreed upon us generally. But only the fixing of the zero point were, came as a surprise for everyone. And also for the Israelis, because the Israelis are spying very intensively. You know that they have enormous control, especially in Gaza. They have all landlines, all uh, mobile phones, tabs, and things like that. In addition, they have uh, uh, implanted so many cameras everywhere. And the Palestinians know that. Hamas knows that, and the Jihad. So sometimes they meet near to a camera and talk about uh, any, something which is not that what they intend, so they can send false messages. And they succeeded excellently in deceiving the, uh, the Jews. But like for example, they have discussed casually that... Uh, any action is futile now, it's nonsensical, it would lead to nothing. Let us see if there's any robust uh, political solution. And that was their usual way. They discuss anywhere they guess there's a camera or they know there's a camera. And they left the camera in places. 
the moment they did the action, they removed all these cameras, and then Israel added then obviously their uh, uh, their drones and so on, the so called quadrocopters and so on, which is spying continuously day and night now. So that succeeded, was a, and then uh, Israel was in a state of shock. Uh, rumors were going around. Uh, the uh, the obviously then then uh, after sh short time of preparation and so on, they started their vicious uh, murderous campaign in Gaza, and uh, uh, Biden came and everyone came and so on. And uh, I my guess now one day it may be proven with certitude that when Biden came, he instructed Israel, "You have to annihilate uh, Gaza." Not only Hamas does that's no no matter of discussion. Because it's a terrorist organization, according to America and Israel, anyway. But eliminate Gaza, kill all of them, or kick them to Sinai. And to, but do it in a reasonable time, should know. And they, everyone thought that can be done in one month, one and a half months, something like that. Most likely in that meeting, because Biden was in the cabinet meeting for several hours, uh, the Israelis, as, as usual, treacherous and stabbing in the back, as, as they are always, with the Zionist Jews and the Israelis especially, they must have recorded that. So they have an evidence against him that he is the one who authoring the genocide. That's the reason he is now, till now stuck. He cannot go against against Netanyahu because you know this evidence, in addition to other filthy things like Hunter involvement in bribes with China, with Ukraine, and other things. They have tons of these things. And obviously also issues of, of uh, sexual misconduct. But this is becoming in the West relatively minor. Everyone is involved in sexual misconduct. The LGBT and things like that. so it's not a major issue. It's maybe in the in, in the in the east in our countries. It may be a major pressure pressure point for rulers, but not. I don't think it's that much in America, especially Trump. He doesn't he doesn't care about anything like that, and he even sometimes says things like that publicly. But uh, things like the Odriga genocide specifically, and, and they have a record that's extremely implicated. That would damage America internationally and legally enormously. So I think he's holding something, but there's only a speculation. This is my best guess, because the way he is behaving is just not only an old genocide and senile man, it is someone who's really under pressure, man is in the hand of Netanyahu, rather the opposite, which is unconceivable without having some considerable pressure points. It's not only election and, and money for, for, the, for, for, the, uh, for, for the election and the uh, uh, bribes from uh, from the Zionist lobby. I think it, it, it goes a little bit deeper and uh, more more uh, more uh, uh, damning. Anyway, so they started the murderous campaign. We are hoping uh, we, we have just quick scan of the past. We are hoping that uh, the speech of uh, Hassan Rahmatullah would have been clarifying, and unfortunately. Uh, it came to be a great support. That's one opportunity missed. We'll discuss along the way where it is, a, why it was an opportunity missed. And we see now the result of that. And uh, there are good reasons to believe that he uh, that he prepared uh, another speech, but then uh, Iran put pressure on him uh, that he should not uh, say anything which indicate that he would be stepping in because of Gaza. Uh, majorly, the, the skirmishes on the border, that's okay. That's what was agreed upon, and this is a standard. Uh, like in support of Gaza, just skirmishes and removing the various observation devices, the various co control points, and so on, bit by bit, emptying the north from its settlement by, by Katyush and things like that. That would be uh, good action to do, but don't say that uh, if, uh, if if uh, anything which indicate that if Gaza is being annihilated or or Hamas, then you you have to step in. Uh, just uh, in commenting on the presence of the American forces and other uh, international forces flexing their muscles, which was a bluff. I'm insisting it was a bluff, and it's still today a bluff. We'll get to that in more detail. Um, uh, he said if we are attacked, and he added the 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 deadly word in Lebanon. That essentially what really undermined any attempt to uh, to to really attack Israel in the depth, and uh, as a retaliation, which is just and justified by if by, by by Islamic law, that's what counts. We don't care about their international law, but also by international law because they started annihilating uh, civilian on masses. There was another opportunity when the International Court ICJ, International Court of Justice. 
uh, issued a preliminary injunction uh, that the fight must stop and the genocide must stop because there's a credible reason to believe that there is a genocide. The ruling does not say it is definitely a genocide, but there's a very good reason to believe there's a genocide, and the fighting was stopped because of that. That would have been a good opportunity to review the situation and issue a warning that if the genocide does not stop, let's say next week or next month or within a month or within two weeks, you have to give a deadline, I think. Then we will regard ourselves at liberty to attack uh, uh, Israeli civil, civ civilian in Tel Aviv. So, so attack Tel Aviv in uh, as uh, as, a, uh, as a retaliation and deterrence for Gaza, but it was, was missed, and so on. Other opportunities came which could be taken but had been missed. Uh, the uh, the Iran position could be interpreted at that time interpreted as an effect. They have never been intending to uh, to 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 work for Aqsa and so on, or it is cowardice. Or uh, the false wisdom, they usually appeal to the false wisdom. You see what the price of the false wisdom, how, how it became. Then, obviously, it was clear that Iran is a low step. So things started continuing annihilation. And then when they felt, although uh, for by God's grace, uh, God's grace and, and uh, the resistance and uh, jihad spirit of the Mujahideen in Gaza, uh, they, uh, uh, they did not succeed in finishing Hamas. And they didn't succeed except with a short, uh, a short uh, treacherous uh, ceasefire to liberate few, uh, a few, uh, a few uh, prisoners of war, etc. Whatever this, we are captives. This is the word captive generally, as a general term. Uh, but then it came back to fighting during these first few months, and it, it became clear that that uh, that uh, Israel is not going to succeed. I think the Americans evaluated that. And that's the reason on Fe February, top secretly, uh, 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 Biden asked Israel to issue a written document signed by the, by the cabinet that they are uh, uh, complying with international law and not using American weapons for, for killing civilians and so on. And they have uh, they, they make an undertaking that they don't commit a genocide. And the Israel is delayed and played game, but he put all pressure that you have, otherwise I, I will do some strong steps. So they issued the document. The document is an American hat in March. I don't know what the document was. The value of document is uh, for maybe Biden not to exonerate himself, and then the case they expose him, he can use this. I don't think it will help him. But that's what that has happened, as leaked by well-informed American sources. So things continued. Uh, the position of Iran was disappointing generally, and so on, and uh, and uh, and uh, people started. Meanwhile, interestingly, someone new came on the block, which nobody ever expected. That's, that's Ansarullah, that's Yemen, generally. Ansarullah. And uh, they started blocking Bab al -Mandab. And uh, obviously, the Western power, having the biggest fleets in the world, especially as I said to America and Britain, the masters of the sea for several centuries, they regarded, we can't, uh, we, we, we can't sweep them away. And then, it turns out that they were unable, ultimately, after long back and forth, the Eisenhower was hit and went back home for repair. So it became uh, ineffective as an, uh, as an uh, uh, airport platform, as a moving airport platform, because there's such, such a big hole on the, on the top deck. It was not sunk, but there's no need to sink it. If it's cannot be used as an, to start uh, to land and, and start aeroplanes, then what's the purpose of it? It is useless. So it went back home for repair. They have covered up that nicely. Although there's an interview with the admiral, the real admiral, the commander, who described the ferocity of the battle. They tried to, uh, to, to bomb Yemen, but Yemen gave them the proverbial middle finger. And uh, we can say that Yemen succeeded in blocking Balman and defeating the two maritime world powers, <clears throat> America and Britain, the current one and the previous maritime world power, superpower. So they are defeated, and uh, there's a question mark about what what is the purpose and the usefulness of aircraft carriers in or opening seaways. Yes, it may come close to a, a coastal area, like 500, 700 kilometers, and launch air attacks against a country which did not have sufficient defense or countermeasures, but that's, that's it. So it seems to be the time the aircraft carrier is over. It's a time of, of the drones, of the missiles, and hypersonic, and 
and uh, supersonic and uh, ballistic and drones specifically. So that's that's uh, so they are many called American and the uh, message the American bluff. We don't need to. And uh, uh, and they even dare to do some action which the Israelis make a revenge, but again, the Yemeni did not the, call the Israeli bluff, bluff and attacked again, and they say attacked again. Anyway, the distance is so far that the Israeli attacks are relatively ineffective and have, you know, will, will not result in much of any damage. But it gave, gives Yemen and also the allies of Yemen, if they are, if they are serious and uh, alert, uh, because the Israelis targeted refinery, a refinery, and uh, and uh, power generation. So as a principle of retaliation and deterrence, you can target similar items. For Yemen, obviously directly, but for any ally of Yemen, he can attack them the same. So this is a message again to Iran and him, but they did not take the message. Then we had the, the, uh, the attack against the, so the Israelis felt, uh -huh. definitely uh, the Iranian are the low step. The weak, and we can grab them. In addition, we may be able to pull America with us to finish Iran and demol demolish whatever they are the remaining or ongoing of the nuclear program. Uh, so they attacked the embassy or the consulate it's next to the embassy. It, it, it's the same diplomatic complex, killing quite a number of uh, of uh, uh, IRG uh, commanders, high-ranking generals. And uh, since it's attack against Iranian soil, the embassy is regarded as the soil of the country which the, uh, to which the embassy belongs. As regarded, Iran obviously uh, has all the legitimate reason and also the motivation, and was actually, I would say, was almost forced uh, to uh, to respond. Uh, uh, then we have the, uh, the April response, which was, uh, I think, it was quite weak. Um, uh, it was almost like a staged piece of theater to show symbolically that we we can hit you and things like that, and uh, it cost it costed uh, um, Israel and America a ton of money. We estimate go between minimum one half a billion to three and a half billion for the rockets they shot just to intercept uh, old-fashioned ineffective drones, which were sent in big numbers just to saturate the air defense, and the. Supersonics, a few supersonic, seem to be all of them went through, but they were not targeted to something substantial. I think that was a mistake. It was a mistake to do that because if you beat the general principle is that if you must beat, then you beat hard. So the other side recognize that you are serious. That was interpreted wrongly. Obviously, after that, that moment, they spent it that it's ineffective, it doesn't mean anything, and so on. And America sold this this uh, this um, uh, media campaign as. Uh, as if uh, present itself to 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 the uh, Iran that we are mediating, we don't want the war really to spread, and uh, we are the one who are restraining the Israelis. I think the later events have shown that they are lying. It's only a trickery. It's all a deceptive move to give themselves and Israeli time for preparation. Evidence after that, more planes and more tanking planes came to the area, put, putting the stage for whatever action needed down the road. Then there was the assassination of Raisi. Which Iran covered up and claimed is technical. I don't believe it's a technical. I think it's the right was behind that. I'm almost certain about that. Obviously, I cannot make an oath on that because I don't know where, but it's almost certain that it's the Israelis behind that. But the Iranians were, were really embarrassed and forced uh, uh, to, to just, if, if they announced that Israel is behind that, they would have been obliged to do something massive action, but they're still chickened out, especially this new president turns out to be. Either an extremely uh, uh, appeaser or a munafiq, or uh, he is uh, uh, such a gullible symbol to be, be, be defies belief, which has been shown later to be uh, one or most likely the first one. If we have, if we give him some good credit, he is just just a blatant idiot. Even Pepe Escobar, the famous uh, Brazilian journalist who is following the war in Ukraine and the situation in the in, in the Far East for now for almost three decades, uh, said uh, everyone is shocked about the simplicity and the naivety of this man in the United Nations meeting recently, but we'll get to that. So, Israel so took more liberty and they assassinated Hadiya in, in, uh, in, uh, in Tehran in the celebration for the inauguration of the new president. And uh, 
that's uh, that obviously put Iran the spot. They must take revenge, and they say they will take. But then this gullible man, this Masoud Bazid Khan, whatever his name, uh, believed that the, the American trickery, because the American promised him that within one week we have a ceasefire, and, and he thought, rightly so, the, the idea itself, for that will be good enough to for, forego the the the, the uh, uh, the, the retaliation ending the war Burma ceasefire that would have been a good price no problem no, no no issue with that but the problem is that to believe that the Americans are serious in their effort and they are not deceptive and they are good intended and seem to he repeated that in, in the United Nations attendance so this man is dangerous we have to watch him carefully and the Iranians have to watch him carefully and I think they're watching him now carefully and there was a demonstration against him and so on we'll come to that also so one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, until eight weeks, it was clear that. And then even until uh, until uh, the United uh, United Nations session, in which during the, his stay there, uh, Netanyahu gave a very uh, arrogant, bellicose speech, insulting everyone in the world, showing such an arrogance, which is unbelievable. And during his stay there, he gave the order to assassinate Hassan so then it was clear that Iran must respond. And then there were demonstrations going on in Iran. And uh, I think the, uh, the demonstration is, I think it's spontaneous by the people, but definitely the IRG, uh, the, the Iran Revolutionary Guard is, is pushing that forward. So on. And there's rumors that they, uh, uh, that also the Khamenei was outraged and all of these things. Whatever these reports cannot be trusted 100%. Because I have the feeling that Khamenei is more in the camp, in the gullible or the coward camp of uh, of Ba'am Saud Badish Khan. But the days will show that. It will come. All that will be shown. And they did the action of last week, Tuesday. Now, the action of last week, Tuesday, uh, was all in all a solid, good action. Solid action. However, again, it was relatively measured. Yes, there was no civilian target. I think this, I will support that. I would say it was good not to target any civilian, restrict on military, but uh, and military and security uh, targets. I would have, if I were in their place, I would have made all air, uh, air bases a target, have more hypersonics and, uh, and ballistic. Uh, the ballistic were usually used mostly because the accuracy is the accuracy is accuracy is slightly less than the hypersonic, uh, but they used mostly to to uh, get the arrow system and uh, David thing and the uh, uh, and and the Iron Dome. The Iron Dome is ineffective in that. Iron Dome is really for slow rockets, for uh, drone things like that. Uh, while the David thing is some is essentially the equivalent of the of the uh, of the uh, patriot system is for for fast objects and then the arrows is really for hypersonic and and uh, ballistic uh, the, the the problem with the ballistic is that they because of their high target they can be seen far away they are, and speed they are like, they are hypersonic in speed but because their target their 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 uh, their uh, trajectory is uh, is relying on ballistics it, sh it shoots high and then it falls down with, by the falling, it gains speed. And when it hits, it hits with hypersonic speed, yes. But the problem in the high point, it is visible and far away because the high point could be um, like 1,000, 1,200 kilometers up. And this is easily visible from three, 4,000. So the moment you shoot them from Iran, the moment they go up there, let's say up, when they're high above Iraq, they are watched and followed by the radar, and the radar continue watching them, calculating their trajectory, seeing what's there, and then calculate various interception points when they enter the atmosphere or before the atmosphere. That's 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 the theory. Well, the hypersonic fly just above the atmosphere or inside the atmosphere in such a way that they become visible very close, just one minute, half a minute. And it's very difficult to calculate a trajectory and interception point. So the ballistics were really, uh, mostly used uh, to uh, to uh, uh, engage the arrow system, 
but see, even the other system failed because in some places we saw almost 20 hits, like in this famous base, which has been hammered nicely. Uh, the majority and the accuracy is not that seems to be that they use something which just as essentially to work as a decoy, but to do some damage and uh, and 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 uh, and uh, does some explosive damage. But it seems to be the model they used is not the top accuracy because none of these seems to be the hitting the relevant building and and uh, and tankers and things like that. While the hypersonics, all of them hit the target almost precisely. So this has to be also understood and learned for the future. Um, uh, this, uh, 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 the hypersonics may be in total about 30 or something like that. While the rest is the, the ballistic who were really intended mostly as a decoy, but they do some damage when go through. And they hit also the, uh, the, uh, the Mossad headquarters. In their place, I would have made the number much bigger. That's number one. Uh, the 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 uh, the one point uh, the, the the number much bigger, all airports, but also I would have hammered the Ministry of Defense, which has a considerable co co compound, but it's a, essentially a main building, uh, double the attack against the Mossad headquarters, small attack, symbolic attack or something like that, maybe with a ballistic against Netanyahu's house. I know he's not there. I know we know he's in a bunker, but it doesn't matter. It's symbolic, and also the uh, uh, the parliament. So to see that your political targets, you are you attacked uh, so, uh, supremely the over movement, which is equivalent to a head state if that was a state. Then similar facilities you got would be attacked without mercy, and then the other base. Uh, also, they targeted an important, one of the best and strongest and far best reaching radar, radars, the, one of the strongest in the world, one of the best that America produced, and this seems to be have been demolished completely. So meaning the next attack, the arrow system does not have the eye which looks far away, or one, the most important eye, which can detect the claim, a bird and the distance of 3,000 kilometers. So that's gone. That's finished. That's it's confirmed these days. I think today it is confirmed. That's gone. So the head is good, but could have been stronger, much stronger, and uh, giving a stronger message. Uh, that's, I agree with that with McGregor. McGregor, he doesn't agree with the whole, uh, uh, say this is a trap set by the Israelis. But say, independent of that, if you decided to do it, ignore it as a trap or not, because you may share his point of view as a trap to withdraw, to get you into trouble and get the American uh, uh, get in or something like that. Let's assume he's right or wrong. It doesn't matter, say. But the moment you decide to do it, the way they did it is too too weak to give the necessary message. And I think he's right. It's Conan McGregor, who has his own program and has appeared in Judge Napolitano uh, uh, and, and other programs. And also is very frequently interviewed by George Garvey in the, the mother of all talk shows. Uh, so that's right. It should have been stronger. And the issue then, uh, the communique is also interesting. The communique says in, in, in support for the heroic fight to Gaza and so on. So they mentioned mm -hmm. Gaza now support for Gaza. Secondly, in uh, in retaliation, uh, I think it was the third one. Well, I don't know what's the order. And then in uh, in uh, retaliation for the assassination of Nasrallah, Aniyah and then Nasrallah, and also in support for uh, the people of Lebanon. Uh, because Lebanon, they, they started hammering Lebanon, the assassination of, of Al-Nasrallah was co con connected with a severe hammering of the uh, south uh, suburb of Beirut. So that hints that these three areas will be taken into consideration for any future action. But it was not, uh, uh, but it was not said directly. Uh, and if you repeat your attack again, if you retaliate, if you respond to this attack, we will respond in much stronger terms. Uh, that's good, but uh, responding to attack could be in various ways. Obviously, when you read it, at face it respond to the attack by attacking us at home in Iran. I would, if I were there, I would have said, if you respond to the attack, even by increasing the bombing of Gaza or continuing the bombing of the Dahia, then we regard that as a response and become stronger. Unfortunately, that was not formulated, and thus the opportunity was gone to make that clear. And obvious. Obviously, 
the usual spin like in the uh, that's the first of October attack. Let's say Ojefin like in the 14th of uh, April. Uh, it was ineffective, and then some of the barking dogs or, or the electronic flies of Saudi Arabia and the Emirates. Ah, oh, the the warheads were just uh, were just empty. There was no warheads. The whole was a piece of theater, and the usual uh, 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 blabbery of 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 uh, 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 the the agents like Saudi Arabia and so on. But that's all has been now refuted, uh, and. Uh, uh, it, it, it is really, and the Israelis obviously covered up, claiming there's nothing has happened. Most are intercepted or fell as usual, or rockets are usually either intercepted or fall in an unpopulated and open area, which is, has been proven 100% to be 100% lies. It's such lies that, it, and they're still repeating it. Maybe they want to convince themselves that they are getting away, whatever it is. So that uh, that that strike was good, was good, was solid, but is not the most solid one which would have detailed future action. Now, after that, again, America came forward with the usual game of that. Uh, but now in another language, that's we, we advise Israel against attacking the nuclear facilities. And then when Iran responded to the Israelis that they may attack the oil facilities and so on, that we will destroy all, faci all the oil facilities from Azerbaijan all the way to, uh, to uh, UAE. They mentioned all the countries. The only exception was Qatar. It was not mentioned by name. All other investment, including Iraq, Azerbaijan, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Emirates, Bahrain, but not mentioning of Qatar, which is significant. So that's that's uh, uh, that's what happened. And now we're now back and forth. No, no, attack nuclear no, facility. No, don't attack. We'll attack this. We don't attack this. As I said, we will respond strongly. Now the ongoing discussion now is the following. What will happen? It seems to be Israel has no other option at the moment, at least Netanyahu, at least for himself, but also the, the public there, because seem to be even, even so-called liberals and so on. They say this is the one is a lifetime opportunity to strike the nuclear program. Uh, some of doomsdayers in America, like uh, Lindsey Graham and others, say we, uh, we must help Israel attacking the nuclear program. This opportunity to take it out. Etc. Etc. The government say we advise them against that, but we don't have no control over the action. That's what Biden said, and he had a very weak interview recently. He's wavering. Nothing clear is it, My feeling is that this is all uh, deceptive, uh, uh, because the, meanwhile, and even before that, and meanwhile, more tanker and more uh, fighter jets are sent to the area. So it's clearly something is being now prepared and ready for a possible stage. So uh, it seems to be that uh, strike is coming. Maybe it will be staged right now when we are talking. But most uh, most likely it's either tomorrow, the anniversary, the one year anniversary of the uh, of the uh, of the seventh of October. It will be tomorrow, or it may be delayed for maximum, if, if it is ever delayed, yeah, uh, 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 not after the election, for the election, like five to 10 days. And it will be then, if it happened either tomorrow or in five to 10 days, most likely it is uh, uh, to, to also to have some benefit for uh, Biden. And because it seems to be now it's almost clear that uh, Kamala Harris winning is, is very remote. It's quite remote. Unlikely. So they have to do something. And the assassination of Trump has not worked. And secondly, an attempt to do that now will lead to a civil war. So that's not the way to go. So the only way is to make the government sure that they are wise, they're managing the world, the affair as it should be. <clears throat> and they they can lead the country in a state in a situation of war. And for that, the best will be for their point of view, their twisted point of view, is to be engaging into almost strong action against uh, Iran. And uh, in that case, it, it would be most likely to take out the uh, so-called nuclear facilities. That, that's, that's, that's the strongest possibility. It could be, all of it is, could be just, just the same thing. But it, it, is, it does not seem that Israel can, can leave that uh, aside because they are they have failed in Gaza, they are strategically defeated, 
and now the Hamas and the other Mujahideen and Jihad and so on are starting the counter attacks against the Nazarin Nazarin corridor, uh, Rafah, uh, the Philadelphia Strip will be soon, attacks will be starting there. And daily we have 10, 20 injured and killed. And so on one tank, one machine taken. So it is going back as if we are starting 7th of October again. So that's, that's there's no success yet. At, at the Lebanese border, it seems to be Israel is, has failed until now. They admitted until now what 60 killed and 100 something injured. They live with just that. And they even announced names and uh, they have a funeral procession and all of these things. But I guess there are other sources claiming it's, it's, it's actually more closer to 10 for that, closer to 500. Take a number in between. That would be a good one. Five times that number, it makes sense. 250. So they're having heavy losses. They are unable to penetrate. Military specialists say the behavior of the Israelis there is similar to in the U2006, which has failed, number one, the tactics and so on. Secondly, the soldiers have lost confidence, especially after Gaza, and they are doing the same error they did in Gaza. Instead of protecting the tanks and walking behind the tank, giving the backside protection of the tank, and the tank would take care of the front. They are inside the tanks and the Merkabas and inside the, uh, the uh, 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 armed personal carrier. Uh, and this is this does not make any sense because these needs themselves protection. Some of the soldiers will be behind it to protect from the back on the weak point. There are certain weak points uh, you cannot cover. You cannot cover everything. Otherwise, you will have a you will have a Merkaba or a tank of which cannot move. So you have to do that. Now that they are so afraid, they are all inside. Whether that they get incinerated. And actually three more cars have been shot. Each one has been four or five persons. So we have between 12 to 15 completely incinerated. Because according to Hezbollah, uh, nobody came out. And the, the three uh, the three Merkabas have been out completely. So the people inside have been uh, turned into uh, to ashes. So uh, so that's not the way you can you can manage a battle. And the area does not support really tank movement and so on. So you have to do it by uh, by, by foot and their, their moral and their devotion is quite low. So they most likely will not succeed. There, there will be incursion. They will go maybe five to eight kilometers and then they will be pushed back and back and forth. But until now, they didn't go much. The first day, they didn't go even one centimeter in. Actually, Hezbollah encroached over. Uh, there are reports that even some of Hezbollah people uh, reached Kiryat Shemona and were fighting the street and withdrawing. Possibly they have tunnels. Because there are theories that there are tunnels going in the into Galilee and in Gola. So, so that's they will not succeed there. So they take all uh, their wrath and anger on the civilian in um, uh, in the Dahia, in the southern district. So, um, so we the the Iran has two options. The, the, the one option most likely will not be taken by this kind of leadership. That option is to take the initiative now. How? If I were there, if I have the power and they were there, I would say the following. Since you responded by attacking the Dahi, and killing hundreds of people, actually the number killed in Lebanon total now estimates varies. The Western media claim over 2,000, and, uh, and the Israelis try to put the numbers smaller, but many other sources indicated maybe five to 7,000. So we have an enormous number. One and a half million are now homeless. So it's enormous, it's really enormous. It's almost like Gaza the first few weeks. So you have responded by attacking the Dahia because in our communique and so on. I don't think you need to be announced that. I think they should do now the respond to the response, the harsh one. And they should be completely devastating. It should incorporate in this stage, still no civilian, but in this stage, it should incorporate the following. All power genetic station out. The three refiners, they have only three refiners out, and the Air Force bases, all of them, but precise and targeting. And as a bonus, maybe some, uh, some ministry, someone said this is our declaration of war, you want to finish Israel. Yes, it has to be. It will be, it will come to the daylight anyway. This is a cancer incense entity, all of our peace for the last 20, 30. If you want to go, the usual argument which is placed in the international sector. All of them have been rejected by Israel. It is it's like a cancer. It has to be removed. 
that that may be expressed like that directly or later on people express it. So that would really preempt any SIV action. We will talk then about the Samsung option. I will discuss that later, leave that later, which is again a bluff. It's not, it, it, it's not an option. Another is wait for the Israeli attack. It may not come. It may be all this is just to keep uh, to keep Iran at bay while they continue their slaughter and destruction in Lebanon, and may try to uh, reinstate that and continue their their killing and the destruction in, uh, in in the West Bank. The West Bank they're starting now to use air strikes against Tol Karam and so on as if it's Gaza, so it may stay that. So. I would say the best course of action is that I say this, but I doubt that the people there have the courage or the insight seeing all their errors in time past, which have been covered as being wise and the proper behavior and so on. Uh, that's, uh, that's what we expect quite soon. So I'm not clear, I'm 100% sure what will happen. Will they attack tomorrow? That's very well possible, anniversary or maybe within a week or 10 days max, because if you start to attack, there will be some obviously back and forth and fighting and bombing and so on for one week or 10 days. And then this will be enough information to influence the American public. And then the people as usual be gone go supporting the governments and ensuring the win of Kamala Harris and, and Biden. That, that may be one, one possible calculation. It cannot be after the election, it will be over. It will be over. So the, the opportunity has missed. So it's either they will attack tomorrow or within a week. That's if they are really serious about they must take revenge and must attack inevitably. And it seems to be there's a wide demand from politicians of all, even the support liberal and leftists. This is the one, this is the only opportunity. Where even one politician said, there are moments of history. If you take them, you will never get them in a thousand years. This is the moment to destroy Iran's nuclear capabilities. So it seems to be there's very strong pressure, very strong direction, that direction, which will give the ruling group at least some kind of a victory, because in, in Gaza, it is a defeat. In, and if they get, if they think now, that's the way they may think, if we get that victory and hammer Iran into submission or into licking its wounds and being busy with itself for several months, then we can go do, do the slow, slow process of Killing, killing, uh, uh, rolling Hezbollah back until the Litani and killing, uh, killing the people in Gaza just by depriving them from water and so on, and even poisoning their, their supplies. So they just die out. They will get extinct. We don't need to go and fight anymore. We just, and nobody in the world will move because we have Hamad. The only one who could move in a great extent is Iran. We hammer them. That's maybe the way they think. It's, it's an imaginary way of thinking, but they, they are. They are mentally delayed. They are sick. They have a sick mentality. So they maybe that's what they're, they're thinking. So let's wait and see. If anyone listening or anyone can, uh, the best suggestion is that obviously to make a decision and do the necessary things will take a couple of days. Maybe the couple of days we don't have. They, they may start the attack tomorrow. But let's assume it doesn't start tomorrow. By Tuesday, Wednesday, a major Iranian attack should come. But I'm not very optimistic about that, that it will happen. If it happens, it will turn the situation completely and accelerate the demise of Israel. Let me assure you again what I said eight months ago, nine months ago. Israel is gone, it's finished, it is dying. The question is only a few months to one or two years or a few years to a decade. That's it. The same question is there, although now it's becoming much more clear that it will be only one year to two years max. That's it. Even the option of 10, 10 years is gone. There's no way it can be saved. It's going. But the question, we want that to be faster and with less pain for ourselves. And keep until the last moment, the civilian airports and all, all seaports, including the, the, the Navy, uh, the naval seaports, the military seaport, because the, na na the naval force of Israel is irrelevant for the battle carry. So leave that, so this would be an exit place for the people. So, so instead of sending a message to the people, your civil airport is open, untouched, and your, your all seaports are open, just, uh, just board the ships and the planes and leave. Save yourself, because it's, it's coming inevitably to a, a, a final annihilation. If, not, if alone just by internal war, war-like fight in the streets of, of, 
of uh, occupied Palestine between uh, Jewish factions, Jewish factions against Palestinian, Palestinian 48 against this, this against that, it would be a big mess. And the best thing anyone who has any brain left from the Zionist invaders is to go back home in safety. And the majority, 95% of them, did not come for any ideological reason or believe in the Moshaya, Messiah, or anything else. No, no. They came because they think this would be a nice life, would be protected, would be having a better life than in Moscow or in London or in Brooklyn, New York. Or, uh, no. When they recognize it is a miserable life, they would leave. And then Israel would just implode naturally or fast, fast or slow. That, that's that's what, what 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 should be done, but unfortunately, uh, uh, until now, the behavior of of uh, Hezbollah and Iran, Hezbollah is now doing the right behavior, uh, but uh, Iran until now is not did not learn the lesson from the success of the Ansarullah to call the bluff. They do not analyze probably what happened in Afghanistan and recognize that America is defeatable and they, you can't kick their butt. They realize that now. But it will not be cheap. You have to suffer. You will be bumped. You cannot, you cannot win against America and Israel by just sitting there and enjoying no casualties and losses. That doesn't work this way. It does not, it's not in this universe. Maybe in another one, but not in this one. But will they come to this conclusion? Anyway, at the moment, I think Hezbollah is now having the right Islam, not only the Islamic part, also international and so on, to respond to, to the killing of civil, the deliberate uh, dummy, uh, massive attacks against civilians in the Dahia, to take the Dahia of the South Dahia of Tel Aviv, which has the majority of banks and so on, uh, to take it under, under just uh, rocket barrages with the intention to damage whatever civilian facilities, government institutions, military, civilian facilities. Someone could say, but this will not do very much to Israel. What it will do? Because most of this is a totally bankered nation. They will be in the bankers, yes. But when they come out of the bank and they see the desolation, what will be the action? Go to the airport. Go to the seaport. Out. And that's what we want. That's a relief. That's what you know. You give them an opportunity to leave. Because they will not stay in the bank until you have They have to get out. To go to their businesses, their life, their livelihood. And then when you come out, Especially in the now, in the beginning of October, it's become windy. There may be some rainy season coming, but it became windy and dry days with wind and the barrage. You may get lucky and you have a firestorm taking half of the city. You never know. Should be done. I think Hezbollah is have all the justification morally, legally, obviously, before that Islamic a long ago, and according to the principle who, is, who is attacks you, you can attack him in equal measure. So that's that's well established Islamic. That's what counts for us. That also international. That's the right of, uh, of retribution and, and response and the right of uh, of, uh, of the and, and the principle of deterrence. Otherwise, they will take more more and more liberties. So Hezbollah can start that right now. He doesn't need any regulation, anything like that. I think that's that's a good idea. So that's that's generally all what's going on. And the, the great unknown is that what Iran will do in the coming few days and what Israel and America will do in the coming few days. I don't think Iran will, will, will regard the attacks against or declare that the attacks against Dahia uh, uh, is an attack against themselves and the response to the attack and the liberty to stage them their counterattack. I don't think they will take this opportunity with people like uh, like uh, Saud Badishkan, what's his name, and uh, Zarif and all these guys who are at best a pleaser and ready to prostrate or at worst traitor and, pay and paid munafiqeen either uh, with this kind of leadership I don't think uh, uh, you, will, uh, you will find someone who will have the courage and the devotion to take the initiative but to take initiative is the demand of the hour hopefully otherwise they will be forced and when you are forced you cannot have the same effect as if you are the one star. It's always the rule is well established. Like related from Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said, no people who have been invaded in their own domain unless they become the lower one. And some people claim is even lifted to the Prophet. And this is a fact of life. 
if you can invade the enemy, and I talk about a legitimate invasion because the enemy is, is, is the aggressor and the, the violator of your rights, if you can invade him and you follow goal and wait for him to attack you, you will be disgraced and you will be the lower one. Take the initiative, carry the battle in the enemy's land. Then you will have better chances of victory, you have better defense, and you have reduction of your losses. That's a general rule. The only excuse is if you are really unable to attack and you have just only defensive position and defensive capacity. Then that's a necessity. Nothing can be uh, can, can can be done about that. But if any facility of attacking and Iran has massive attack facilities, they should take the initiative and not hesitate. Because the attack of the Israelis against our facilities is coming sooner or later, even after the election. Definitely. Because it's, it's not feasible that they would collapse now and uh, they have no capacity. Uh, only one point is that the so-called some sort of option. This has been uh, being rumored for decades now, uh, for years, that the Israelis have nuclear weapons to use as a some sort of option. And they use the story, use the name some sort of option to remind of the story of some some Samson, uh, some, uh, in Arabic, they call Shamshu, uh, the, the powerful Samson, who, uh, whose story is well known, and who was in the temple, and the, the, the enemies were celebrating, and then he uh, saw an opportunity to push because he gained all his power back after growing his hair, obviously this is most likely legendary, but anyway, so if he pushed the pillar, he will smash the leadership, but he will be smashed under the, under the seal. So he, uh, the claim is that he did that and saying, on me and my enemies, that's our goal. But what, what the people do not recognize that the situation of Israel is not like that because Samson did that as a martyrdom operation. Not only to smash the leadership, because you know, he knows that smashing the leadership will decapitate the army of the enemy and his people outside will become victorious. That's exactly what that happened. So it's a, it's a martyrdom operation. It's not, it's, it's not just on me, on my enemies, uh, independent from what's going in the universe. In the case of Israel, it is not. There's nothing to be, there's no other enemy who can save them in that case. Just the opposite. The whole world will be their enemy. So it doesn't, I don't think this assumption option is, is from time to time, they hint that, and they even rumor that they send a message to, to Iran through certain channels that we will use nuclear weapons and so on. You can fairly rest this as a bluff. But even if they use it, Iran has sufficient missiles to destroy Israel completely. That's the code, what uh, Alistair Cook in, in, a, in a famous video and in a famous article actually discussed extensively. And this, he called it the, the red pill. You know, the red pill in, in the movie, the, uh, the Matrix, which gets you out of the Matrix, that's the red pill. So it will not save Israel. And if, if if it's clear in the horizon that this option is being considered seriously, you will have hundreds of thousands of Israelis seizing the parliament, seizing the place, changing the government, because they want to live. They don't want to die, Samson or otherwise. And they say, no, 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 we want to go out. So it is it's not, it's not a given that they, even if they have, and they think they have, that they will use it, because they have no strategic depth. They will be unheard even if the other side does not have nuclear weapons, which is, again, not well established. Whatever say, said that Iran doesn't have or have, I, I doubt very strong. I think they have quite a number of them stored at the site. But even, you don't need that. We don't need even to announce it. So that's roughly situation. Still, many things depending upon the coming few days and upon what's happening in American election. But interestingly, and the recent talk of uh, Trump in the play in Philadelphia, in, in, in Pennsylvania, in the place where the worst assassination attempt against him failed by divine providence, as he say. It's definitely divine providence for some something designed by Allah SWT, which we don't know. Is it good for us or good for the world or bad? That's in the hand of Allah SWT. <laughs> uh, and he, he spoke and so on and uh, got Elon Musk to speak and so on. And his folks say that he, he said clearly that he will end the war in the Ukraine. There's no, no war there. Finish, he will finish. And in the Middle East, said, what did he say about the Middle East? You will not believe what he said. He said, when I get there, I will end the chaos in the Middle East. That's all. I will end the chaos. That's it. And then he said, and in my time, there will be no third world war. 
take that as what you wish. That's a clear message. If he comes, he will not be in this. The Israelis will understand that clearly. He's about, he will abandon them right away, if necessary. He's not going to fight for them. He's not going to fight for them. So this may give them a great push to uh, to, uh, to to do something now before the, he comes on 5th of November. And uh, it's too late to do anything that. Because he's clearly is not going to, to. All what he owes the Jews, he has paid in his first time. That's it. So if anyone tell you otherwise, don't then. And the Jews know that very well. They know that very well, uh, especially Netanyahu. They know that he knows that very well. So almost certainly, uh, it, it would be not for in their benefit, and he would not go for war. And even in the, in the campaign earlier, he said uh, he is striving to 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 get back into a good relation and friendship to uh, to uh, to Iran. Although he issues various remarks and so on, but in, in recently it is more structured to hint really what is. Uh, and during meeting with his, remember his meeting with Netanyahu, and Netanyahu uh, met him uh, after the first visit when he was uh, receiving this uh, standing ovation from the from the Congress. He visited him and uh, said, oh, "I support, you know, I support Israel." But I told Netanyahu, "Finish the business quickly because I want to be a peace president." This he said that, and he's saying it now. I end the chaos, and he knows how to end the chaos. He knows very well if he comes. After that, what has happened until now? So, summary: the very strong motivation for Israel to do something in an hope, attempt to intimidate or subdue Iran. Iran may respond very strongly, but the best course of action is to preempt and take matter in hand and correct all the mistakes of the past. But anyway, let us see what develops. But I'm confident, uh, trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this cancer entity is gone, is going. The question is that we wanted to go with a minimum bloodshed for us and for them. The best thing is they board the ships and the planes and leave. And we have, should facilitate that, do things in that direction. Okay, that's, that, that's all that can be said at the moment. And let us see what uh, tomorrow and the other few days and a couple of weeks before the American election bring. Because if anything concerning the election, it has to be at least two weeks before the election. So there's enough propaganda, enough rallying the masses to affect the result of the election. If it is done for election purpose. And I wouldn't exclude. I wouldn't exclude. I think uh, uh, Biden and Co. and Harris, they they dying to prevent them. Not because they are keen to keep the power to that extreme, but because you know, if this man comes, he's so vengeful, he will prosecute them until the end of the world and will expose all their scandals. He is sharpening all possible knife to slaughter them and many others in that. Uh, that's the reason it's still a big question if uh, if they will not attire an, an, another assassination attempt or something like that. But they leave that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what, what he decides, what he allows to happen. Is not in our power, but we just we. It, it may be amusing to speculate about that. Okay, I think that's all that can be said now without uh, repeating it again and again. And let's hope for the best. I mean, the best is that victory, which is bi'idhnillah, 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 already there, but with minimum loss for us and maximum loss for the enemy and uh, forcing him out of the country with minimum bloodshed. I'm not interested in. Some people say we need to annihilate them. No, we don't need. We don't want to annihilate. We want them to please. If you go now, we will be very appreciated. Go, go back to Moscow, to London, and uh, Brooklyn. You are safer there, and that's your place. Here, you it's not your place. Here, you are occupying, trespassing, and committing a crime. There, everyone's at peace. You are at peace. We are at peace. I think that's the way to go.